We have uh, many volunteers who are uh, uh, part of the IT cell and the digital communications team. Hello and welcome to New Indian Express. I am Alisha and today I am in conversation with BJP Youth Wing Leader, Karnataka BJP Youth Wing Leader, Tejas Visoya. Hi Tejas Hi. You were introduced to the panel that we had right now as the BJP IT cell chief for Karnataka, right? I'm a little interested to know how your BJP cell works at this time, especially with the employment sector, as in how, what are the recruitment criteria? How do you recruit people to be a part of the IT cell? Okay, uh, first of all, I am not the IT cell chief of Karnataka. Okay. I'm the general secretary for the party's youth wing in Karnataka. Uh, but I had an opportunity to overlook the uh, IT and uh, communi digital communications department during the Karnataka elections and I'm playing a small part in the national elections now uh, in the same mm -hmm. digital communication space. So uh, answering your question as to how the recruitment happens, there isn't a formal process in terms of an employment employee mm -hmm. kind of a, a arrangement in the party. Okay. Uh, we are a very cadre driven party, we are a very volunteer driven party. Therefore, we have uh, many volunteers who are uh, mm -hmm. uh, part of the IT cell and the digital communications team. However, there are a few employees mm -hmm. who uh, are the technical employees, for example, the ones who are in charge of uh, creating, uh, say, graphic designers mm -hmm. and video okay. editors and uh, infographic uh, and animators. Mm -hmm. So, uh, these are, uh, you know, a few, a very handful of them, okay. a few, a few of them who are employees. Uh, but uh, apart from that, the whole process is uh, purely volunteer driven. So now that we are talking about the digital aspect, it's phenomenal how BJP has so many followers on, um, you say, Twitter or yeah. uh, Facebook. They have 10 million, 11 million likes on Facebook, whereas the Congress isn't, doesn't even stand at half, barely 5 million or something. So um, there's a, elections are coming up, Karnataka elections just got over and we have the Lok Sabha, the big election coming up. So a lot of, a lot of content to be generated right now, a lot of work to be done. But what happens between like, these employees like who are on a pay scale, you said limited number, but they're still there, right? So what happens to them when you don't have an election per se, when, when there is no election happening? They, how, what do they do? They still work there or? No, they will still there because every day, uh, whether uh, you know there is election or not, the party is a, a 365-day functioning unit. Mm -hmm. Therefore, uh, uh, you know they are there to support the party irrespective of whether there is an election or not. But, you know, there is an election in India at every point in time at some corner or the yeah, other. Of course. So, um, during, of course, during the Lok Sabha elections, yeah. the workload is quite, uh, you know, intense. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, during the other non-election period, if you may call that, mm -hmm. uh, the workload may be uh, less, but the party still is working. So, all of them, all office so bearers of the party long, have work. It's a year-long process, right? It, yearly process yeah yeah it's sorry. it's people yeah. are there uh, through the year yeah of course uh, there are graphic designers there are uh, video editors in in your team in the digital team since you said there is no per se em like criteria for employment right i have been going through the karnataka bjp page uh, doing some research and there were some tweets with little grammatical errors like who who filters them through? Do you happen to go through them or filter, or are they like their own bosses? So they put up something. They have a pattern. They have a uh, say a set of pre-made infographs. They just change certain things and just push it. No, no. There is an editorial process. There are uh, people who you know monitor the content, the uh, uh, factual accuracy and uh, editorial integrity of the data that we put in. Yeah. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, uh, there may be uh, a discrepancy one or two that may have crept in inadvertently, right. uh, which uh, happens to the best of the newspapers. Of course, of so, uh, in uh, a volunteer driven setup where yeah. uh, uh, people are uh, not uh, completely professional, but are doing it in their uh, volunteer capacity, a small discrepancy here and there may have taken place. But uh, uh, I would say that the factual data that the BJP's uh, handles uh, that, you know, official verified handles yeah. that put out are uh, quite uh, solid in terms of its uh, factual integrity. Okay. Talking about factual integrity, uh, Mr. Piyush Goyal recently put up a video of uh, Vande Bharat train where it said that it's doctored as in the, a lot of fact checking websites are there these days and they have claimed that it's a doctored video. 
that the speed was increased in that video it was speed sped up but then um, it's not something like huge of a misinformation but again that's again factually incorrect when you're talking about even increasing little bit of the speed so you're saying that the BG did the mr piyush goel in his tweet put out the fact that the uh, train travels at uh, 280 km per hour did he say that no okay so uh, the fact of the matter is that the train travels at 180 km per hour yeah that is the uh, fact that has been communicated yeah definitely. it happens to be the fa fastest train in india yeah and i think uh, the fact remains that no but what i'm saying a faster is even assuming hmm. that it was uh, uh, like what do you say that you know it, it was a, a video where it showed the train to be faster than what it is then even assuming that uh, the allegation is true uh, the fact remains that we have never stated okay. that the train is not mm -hmm. uh, you know is faster than 180 km per hour yeah, right but uh, what i'm saying it's still misinformation it at times it happens that uh, certain pages right they push a lot of i won't say fake news because i feel it's lot like it's overused and it will bastardize these days but misinformation it's been spreading a lot what is your take on that well uh, see uh, um, alisha uh, uh, social media and uh, such platforms like twitter facebook etc today are a double edged sword um so the advantage of these platforms is that all of us have great access to information and content and we also have a space where we can uh, uh, put our views out mm -hmm. at the same time these platforms have served as a great uh, uh, tool to correct fake news and mm -hmm. to bring in the right information right and this i'm saying uh, as a matter of principle across all parties mm -hmm. uh, say for example the congress has uh, or you know supporters of the congress or the left ideology have put out a fake news people from you know the uh, so called right wing have corrected them and vice versa both sides i'm not saying that you know that uh, uh, any one particular uh, set of people have a complete uh, repository over or you know hold over truth right. having said that the challenge with uh, open media and uh, social media like this is that uh, they are a self regulating platform right so if there is a fake news the best method to counter it is another website or another uh, effort yeah. uh, which counters fake news and puts out the real factor real you know facts yeah. mm -hmm. so i think uh, it's it's like i said it's a double edged sword would you want uh, government regulation i am afraid i don't want any government regulation on social media because irrespective of the political color of the government i wouldn't want my free speech and my access, my my freedom to write what i want yeah. and publish what i want to be uh, monitored by uh, any government for that matter but the government is regulating um, what we do i mean they're legit snooping into our computers i mean you're well aware of it right and so at a point when the government is at the government is not snooping into our computers there are a certain uh, statutory authorities mm -hmm. which uh, were authorized by the erstwhile upa government yeah. to monitor content online mm -hmm. which may have potential uh, to harm the uh, national security and integrity interests of the country and i think in that regard uh, some steps have been taken and these steps are taken irrespective of which party is in power in the center or in the state and having said that personally i okay. feel the right to privacy is an extremely important and integral part of uh, every individual and uh, uh, the interference of the state in so far as our uh, personal lives is concerned mm -hmm. especially with respect to data privacy yeah. and uh, inter, uh, you know internet privacy has to be upheld and uh, the government's uh, uh, role or rather interference must be as minimal as is possible right and uh, tejasvi you are a youth leader you are one of the prominent faces of bharatiya janata party uh, representing the youth for the youth you must be interacting with the youth a lot if i have to take your perception like what do you think the youth at this point want especially in terms of employment right and so uh, there have been reports that the employment rate is all time low and whereas uh, in the parliament we don't even rake up this the bharatiya janata party has been dismissing the fact that it's not true at all they're going to cross check it they're going to run their own survey what you have to say about the employment because employ because india is a very young country we need employment so how does one generate employment and how does the government generate employment 
Alisha, please answer me uh, when I ask you these questions because I also uh, see irrespective of our political, uh, uh, you know, affiliations, yeah. there are certain issues which is which are far more important than any political party. Yeah, for example, the issue of jobs hmm. is 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 uh, extremely important for a young man. Yeah. If you have the burden of uh, supporting a family at home and uh, uh, you know you have old parents to take care of yeah. and you don't have a job that is not you know bjp versus congress no, it's no, about finding a solution yeah. but that doesn't mean that facts have to be uh, you know dismissed in a manner mm -hmm. that suits certain political narratives okay. mm -hmm. the world bank mm -hmm. has stated that the uh, the last 2 years 3 years in uh, in fact has witnessed the highest amount of people mm -hmm. in India coming out of a poverty line. Mm -hmm. 44 people mm -hmm. ha come out of poverty line every single minute in India. That has been the record of this government. N previously, no, I mean the pace at which, mm -hmm. you know, n people are getting out of poverty line mm -hmm. has been the highest under this government. Right. Are you saying that 44 people come out of poverty line in India every minute without having sustainable jobs? But point then, one. Okay. Point two. We are looking at uh, uh, you know uh, formal data, in data from the formal sector, data yeah. you know uh, inavailability of data from the informal sector, and you know there's there's a debate over how lack of data related mm -hmm. to jobs yeah. is also a very serious concern. Mm -hmm. I think irrespective of the party in power, governments must institutionalize a process, and I think this government has done uh, okay. some efforts to you know get a better better data availability and accuracy. Niti Aayog is working on that. Uh, I think we will have better data, you know, to uh, make better policies. Having said that, the highest number of roads in the last five years has been built by this government. Who built these roads? Did we get people from Italy to build these roads? People from India build these roads. Oh. It obviously created a lot of jobs. More than 15 lakh crore, oh. 15 lakh crore oh. loans have been dispersed under Mudra Yojana. Assuming hmm. that one loan sustained or created one job hmm. because it's business, so it will yeah. generally create more than that. Hmm. But even assuming it created only one job, you have 15 crore jobs right there. Okay. Roads have been constructed, television, I mean, there is increase in DTI, there is increase in, in uh, uh, digital connectivity. L villages have now gotten electricity, such massive infrastructure uh, activities have taken place. All of these infrastructure activities have created a large amount of public employment. Right. So, you are saying that irrespective of the data is important, but irrespective of that, employment generation is at a good pace. And But you also mentioned that people have... Uh, employment generation is a, has taken place at an unprecedented level. Okay. There is a great amount of jobs that have been created. Okay. However, you must also realize that we are a country of a billion people. Yeah. So every and we are a young country. Hmm. So every single day, hmm. more and more number of young people are coming into the job market. Right. When this is the scenario, mm -hmm. there is bound to be a far higher cry for more jobs in a country like ours. Whereas look at a, look at countries like Ireland, Scotland, and you know other Scandinavian countries where it's it, the problem is of an aging population, yeah. where uh, you know you have more jobs and less people. In the in our country, the scenario is different. So, in such a challenging scenario where you know there is such uh, high demand for uh, uh, jobs and the population mm -hmm. is so large, do you not want a uh, corrupt free government? Would you not want a government that delivers on high infrastructure? Would you not want a government that uh, uh, creates large public infrastructure which uh, further enables uh, uh, public you know in, uh, generation of public eco um, employment? Would you not want a government which actually facilitates more money in people? people's hands would right. it these are right, right. steps but, that but need to be taken but you say that uh, every hour 44 correct me if i'm wrong 44 people they are uh, getting out of the below the poverty line right? but 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 is getting out of that criteria in india it's i think rupees 32 per day if you earn below that then you're below the poverty level if you earn or above that you are out of it so do you think 34 say even 40 rupees a day is that enough to run a family that's not sustainable job. I can I can uh, cross that boundary. I can 
go out of that list alisha i, I appreciate uh, and i am with you in the in sharing the concern mm -hmm. that uh, we need to do better but uh, uh would you are you not happy that uh, 44 people every single minute are getting out of such dire poverty I even assuming mm -hmm. it is 38 or 40 rupees mm -hmm. but is it not a heartening fact that 44 people are getting out of such that the quagmire of ever killing poverty every right. single minute is it that is that yeah. not a good thing yeah. do you think 6000 rupees enough for a farmer as a as a basic minimum income support um i think um the you have not uh, with due respect uh, the 6000 rupees is not to be understood as a basic minimum income support mm -hmm. the 6000 rupees is uh, in addition to the other schemes that the government has brought in yeah. to facilitate and make the farmers uh, uh, income and life better for example this government under narendra modi has brought the largest mm -hmm. fasal bhima yojana which is the largest insurance scheme for farmers so no more gone are the days where uh, a farmer would uh, invest uh, you know in in uh, his crops and then due to some unforeseen vagaries of the monsoon mm -hmm. lose his uh, crops and would be on the streets because now he has a first time a solid insurance mm -hmm. cover okay in addition to that this government has also brought uh, Uh, many uh, insurance schemes uh, daily insurance uh, worker insurance mm -hmm. for the farmers as uh, with as low a premium as uh, you know 300 rupees per year okay also this government has ensured that there is timely delivery of urea mm -hmm. there has not been a single right in the entire country anywhere in the last 5 years where the farmers uh, had to go on the street demanding for uh, timely supply of urea which was a common place in the previous governments the government has also actively worked towards doubling of farmers income okay. animal husbandry um, and uh, uh, creating of national e uh, markets national e mandis so i think the 6000 rupees that was given was only one of the larger in, you know one of the host of other incentives which were uh, rather policy measures that have been taken by this government okay. to make the life of the farmer uh, far more prosperous so i okay. think it should not be seen in isolation it is very myopic and very uh, um incorrect to okay. see it uh, in isolation as 6000 rupees is the money that you know the government is giving for the farmer to live off the 6000 okay. rupees for the whole year okay. that is not the whole okay. talking about farmers and the doles and everything where is the data of farmer suicide why has there not been a data in the past 2 years why don't we have the numbers well i think um, over the last few years irrespective of this government or not yeah. uh, like i said there has been a lot of lack of data or rather i would say la a lack of correct uh, data yeah. in the public domain and i think uh, niti aayog and the government has uh, uh, taken this as a very serious issue all these years we were depending on uh, the ncrb data for uh, you know yeah. detecting uh, farmer suicides yeah. but uh, i think the government of the day is uh, developing far more uh, scientific and reliable methods to uh, map uh, issues like mm -hmm. farmers data uh, farmers uh, sure, suicides and uh, many other uh, uh, data points as well mm -hmm. so i think uh, with far more uh, concentration mm -hmm. and impetus given to data uh um, collection and integrity mm -hmm. of data collection i think we will have uh, uh, more uh, solid and reliable data in the coming days yeah but when in the coming days when you say when you say coming days it's been more than 2 years that we last saw a data sheet when can we expect it to come up why why it has it taken so long data collection Because definitely takes time yes but no no not just data collection now see when you are reviewing the whole process of collecting the data okay. you are coming up with new points as to how these data has to be collected okay. and you are determining new pointers on which data has to be collected methodologies are different i think it's a very holistic change that the government is trying to do and uh, it's not that the government wants to hide anything it is the fact that uh, the new processes have been put in place and they are going to take some time uh, where do you see yourself in this party in 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 karnataka i'm not even talking about the national aspect because we have a lot of um, big faces out there talk about karnataka where do you see yourself in in say next 5 years 
well see this is not a, a corporate uh, you know a career you yeah, know where you have a chartered uh, career mm. path where you know um, you know 5 years from now i want to be vp or ceo yeah. or something like that but uh, well, to be very honest with you um, it is primarily the ideology of the party and uh, the uh, uh, that that motivates me and uh, i find great pleasure in the work that i do mm-hmm. and uh, like some old wise man had once said the reward for uh, work is the pleasure of doing the work so i think uh, i'm happy doing the work i'm doing so i don't uh, want to see what 5 uh, years from now holds or in terms of you know positions or mm-hmm. authority i'm just happy doing the work i do and i hope i get to continue the work i'm doing okay and um you you sat at a panel where we were talking about dissent now dissent in campus uh, do you think we still have a place for dissent if he is from a college or university like jadavpur or jnu and he's talking against the government that basically dissent then you don't have to put a label on him right but then people like vivek agnihotri immediately put a label on him and call him urban lakshmi you no know, no what vivek agnihotri is trying to do is he's trying to reverse the game of how the communists play it Okay. So the communists basically their modus operandi has always been not just in India but globally yeah. has been if you talk to a communist in a debate yeah. the first thing they do is to label the opponent so it's uh, Vivek Agnihotri is now trying to you know turn tables and give them a a taste of their own medicine so if you where where do you think these uh, the origins of all these uh, uh, labels are fascist uh, communalist uh, feminist uh, islamophobic these are all uh, communist uh, generated uh, labels so yeah labeling is I their domain i don't think being labeled as a feminist is something wrong no no and whatever feminazis or something feminazis yeah, whatever yeah. you know so these labels are all uh, i'm not pretty femini- sure if uh, fe- feminazis a word uh, i don't know basically my point, point is that you know yeah. these guys are heavily these are terrorist organizations hmm. who are funded from uh, across the border hmm. and these guys have their supporters in the form of say an arun uh, arundhati roy they have their supporters in the form of uh, uh, you know a uh, kavita krishnan and the likes uh who who are uh, you know english speaking swav in five star hotels in the cities who lobby for them you have somebody like prashant bhushan who goes to the supreme court uh, you know for their causes you have a binayak sen so all these people are uh, living in the confines of our cities who are trying to manipulate the media who are trying to manipulate the way uh, uh you know you and i think by writing articles by uh, filing uh, uh baseless pils in the court okay. using trying to adulterate the streams of justice so i think these are all uh, urban nuxels the ideology remains the same okay insurgency and the ideology not just insurgency the ideology is to destabilize disintegrate and uh, uh dismember the indian union and i am not saying this dr ambedkar had said this in the indian parliament in in the constituent assembly of india he had said that the greatest threat to the indian constitution and the indian democracy comes from the communists and the extreme of the communists are uh, the naxalites yeah so dr ambedkar had warned we should have taken his warning very seriously and the biggest fraud that mm. these communists play on us is that they keep calling themselves ambedkarites when mm. the matter of uh, fact is you know the fact of the matter is ambedkar hated them ambedkar wanted uh, communism to be wiped out of india he also wanted caste to be wiped out of india of course it should be so you you do not believe in casteism uh i do not believe in discrimination of caste uh-huh. discrimination based on caste caste is a reality in indian society whether yeah. i believe in it or you not you cannot do away with it not, uh, whether, not yeah, it's like you know whether i believe in gravity uh-huh. will gravity stop working if i do not believe in it it will right. still continue in the same way caste system or uh, you know uh, the uh, jati paddhati is a very uh, it's a social reality in india however we must all uh, come together to uh, eliminate whatever discrimination based on caste uh, goes on that's something now, we must do you said the likes of arundhati roy prashant bhushan they are urban nuxels uh, the students from jnu again jnu being the hot topic uh, say umar or kanaiya kumar or uh, others um, they are also labeled as urban nuxels right they are just mere scholars or mere uh, student activist that's better scholars yeah. the word scholar student, is yeah, quite okay. too student yeah stretching to far student activists will call them as of now so they barely have any follow followers or fan base okay what are you sure 
Yeah, they they barely they are limited. No, 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 that's good to know actually. They are limit to limited to a certain section of the society, mm -hmm. right? They, their reach is limited to a sec certain section of the society. What threat could they possibly possess to this country? I mean, at a place when we have our leaders saying um, hateful speeches, spewing hate, it is across the political spectrum. I'm not going to call my BJP alone, but. these people being called urban naxals so much being talked about them so much uh, putting three four students into jeopardy putting slapping sedition charges and everything everything now we have a some 12000 pages charge sheet against them and that took 3 years to come up so again what possible threat could they pose to this country there merely nothing how do you know they don't have that's, that's what how do you know have you done an investigation No, but I'm just what I'm trying to say. No, no, I want to know on what basis are you coming to the conclusion these these guys are not threat at all. Okay, I'm saying as we have people like Akbar Uddin Owaisi, we have people like Yogi Adityanath. I'm talking about Yogi Adityanath of him prior to becoming Chief Minister, and we know about the speeches. I can quote some if you like, but we all know the reality. Well, Akbar Uddin Owaisi is uh, spewing hate in Hyderabad. He was he went to jail for mm -hmm. that, and uh, this man Yogi Adityanath is all, was also at that time saying. Um, communal things now like like i can quote something from you that if uh, in during the 2007 hate speech case that we am referring to now the thing no, is no what did he say he said that if muslims can uh, come and destroy your property nobody is stopping you from doing the same he told that to a gathering of hindus after a riot right you can read up on this we all know it's a re it's, it's on record no no assuming that uh, you know that is true mm -hmm. uh i am not holding a brief for anyone here but if the state machinery collapses mm -hmm. and if there is a cultural uh, you know if, if if there's a group of people who are going to come and uh, attack you mm -hmm. and if the state mm -hmm. is not in your support right what will you tell your followers okay what would you do if you were in the position would you tell your parents that uh, mm -hmm. uh, the police is not going to come to your support because the police is under a uh state dispensation yes. which does not support your idea right and then a few of your neighbors are uh, out to slit your throats what would you tell your parents so it's justified so no, what will you do i am asking you what will you tell them it, i i have not been in that position so i don't know what yeah. to do so maybe if you ever get into such a position i don't want you to because yeah. you know that's that's uh, that's a horrible horrible uh, horrific place to be in mm -hmm. but think what would you do would you would you like uh, would you ask your uh, loved ones hmm. to go and surrender and uh, you know commit uh, suicide or certain death embrace certain death or would you ask them to stand up for themselves right but um, again that's a very uh, normalizing the situation what you're saying but uh, no it isn't because that, in 1990 mm -hmm. we are all you know 1990 and post 1990 people and mm -hmm. i assume you are of you know the similar uh, age group yes. so 1990 the year you know most of us were born uh, kashmiri pandits were driven out of their homes yes i'm aware of it yes so it is not normalizing it happened it happened 28 years ago mm -hmm. and the state was a mute spectator mm -hmm. yes yeah but then there are allegations that the army couldn't reach at that time army was delayed for a day etc etc but then um that's again a completely different topic to talk about is it a fact or not that millions were driven out of their homes yeah of that's course it. they that's were that's all that matters of course they were all right and there is no denying in that that's all nobody can so therefore that. when the state fails you these kind of you statements you take up come. law and order in your own hands it, you don't it's inevitable whether you like it or not it's self defense that's how the world works that is why precisely you need a strong state the monopoly to do violence must only be with the state right. the why the monopoly to use force rather must rest only with the state therefore you need a strong state coming back to the point again these three people or these four five bunch of people youth leaders uh student politicians whatever how are they a threat to the country i just want to know tell me why are they a threat to a country i am not saying they are a threat to the country the ideology but, but that the, they believe yeah, exactly. in is certainly that a threat to the country a threat to the of country of course because the ideology calls for 
tukde tukde of this country uh -huh. the ideology that they uh, profess and propagate calls for jung against my motherland okay which is violence of course and uh, why should you not be worried you should be as worried as me right. if someone here is uh, calling for violence against you would you not be worried i would be i mean i love my life so i would i mean if you forget country you know society and all of that for a minute i would be worried about my life man if someone is calling for violence against mm. uh, you know certain ideas i believe in so they are they calling uh, for violence because though where can no, i see no what they what does the bharat uh, tere tukde honge inshallah inshallah and uh, jang rahe uh, jang rahegi jang rahegi again, what does it mean it's doctored right has it been proven that it is doctored has the charge sheet in the has it been proven that it's not doctored so well let's wait for the courts to give an answer right right the charge sheet is fine like you said a 12000 page char charge sheet so i'm sure the 90 days prior to the election very great timing i must say it's all right the police take their own time so they may have i mean because they wanted to perhaps do their job right so they have collected a lot of information like you said 12000 pages so that's a lot yeah, yeah. so let's see the will it stand the scrutiny of the court right uh, well thank you for joining me in this conversation <laughs> with me i have uh, the very young bright and bjp youth leader tejasvi surya thank you so much thank you alisha thank you so much